In a previous video, I mentioned that I wish I could find a big printer that printed as good as my Fabricator Mini. Well, the Makerfront CEO sent me this kit. It's an i3 Pro. So I put it together and I'll give you my review. Stay tuned. So this thing took me about eight hours to put together. It was not easy. And I wouldn't say it was incredibly hard, but it was just kind of tedious. It was on par to me to putting together my X-Carve CNC or my Shape Oco, which I've done videos on. So this thing is incredibly solid. It's all metal, all screwed together, but it's just gonna, it's gonna take you time. This is not one you just throw together quickly and go start printing, which is a little bit frustrating to me because you buy a 3D printer, you wanna start printing. And that's, that's why I prefer and I recommend for anyone just getting started, buy a fully assembled machine. In fact, I've told Makerfront that I recommend that they start selling this or at least making an option that it comes fully assembled. Now, I guess they do have that option, but only for local pickup. It's an extra $200, and they've even got them sitting there, a couple of them sitting there ready to go if somebody wants to stop by and pick one up. So they do have that option, but hopefully that changes that you can get it at any point in time because overall, the, the printer itself is very, very solid but it does take some finesse to get this thing together. One of the first things that I noticed when I opened the box though, was it, I went through the parts list and it didn't include a glass bed. You had said you had to get your own eight by eight piece of glass. I thought that was really weak. You know, you spend all that money for a printer. Now, of course I got this donated, but still I'm, from your point of view, if you wanted to buy one of these, you should get all the pieces. You shouldn't have to go buy a piece of glass. And, and especially, this is not just any glass. You should be buying borosilicate glass, which is a high temperature glass. And then you gotta get it in the right size. And it said eight by eight. And my local hardware store, the one good one where I get stuff, they shut down, guy retired. So I said, screw it. I'm not gonna go shopping around for glass. I just went online. I found it on eBay a 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter, which is close to eight by eight. And I ordered it and within five days I had it. So that's how I solved that. But then it turns out eight by eight is actually a little bit small. The clips, they give you the clips, but they're too small for a 200 by 200 piece of glass. So I got to find better clips. So that's, to me, that's something. I, I did tell Makerfront that and they said they've had issues shipping glass with the metal because it ends up getting broken. Well, you, there's ways to do it. I've shipped a lot of stuff, but if that's such a big deal, ship it separate. Ship it as two pieces, but include the glass. Anyway, so that was the first thing that got me. And then as I went through, I was just blown away by how many pieces there were to put together, how many little screws, and then the screws. There were some uh, lock nuts included that I had to use on the bed and a few other places that were a little bit hard to get to. Well, these things were like 5.5 millimeter nuts. I call them screws, I meant nuts. Um, I couldn't find a tool, and I got a lot of tools in my toolbox. I couldn't find a socket to fit those things. So I had to use a pliers or a, a needle nose pliers to hold them while I did it, and that, that's just really hokey. So that's just not having the right tools, but who's gonna have a 5.5 millimeter socket? You know, size that up a little bit. Get a more common size would be my recommendation. But I got it together and the instructions were rather weak. I found the instructions could be improved a lot. There weren't enough pictures and the descriptions were really, really brief. And so there were times that I put things together and then later had to go take them apart because I did it backwards, I did it upside down because there just, there wasn't enough information there. And that was kind of frustrating. That added time to the whole deal. And another thing is this thing didn't come with the software installed. So I had to flash the Arduino module with the firmware. So you've got to know how to use Arduino in order to get this thing to work. So that, that's another step that makes it a little more difficult for someone just getting started. Now it did include, I, they included the LCD and SD card kit at my request. They don't sell these right now. They've had some issues, I guess, so they're working on a new design. Um, they actually asked me not to review it with this, but I couldn't leave my computer tethered to this thing at all times. And everything I print here, in fact, any future printers I get, they gotta have an SD card. 
or I'm not using them because that's that's the only way I can't have my computer tied up and using these things so I hope they work out the details because you know, the, the issues because this is it's worked well for me it's worked fantastic for me so this is a, a must but right now it's it's something you'd have to buy separately now it, it's a typical ramps display so you can get it pretty much anywhere and the nice thing is the software was already set up to drive it so I didn't have to modify the software to make it work that is a nice perk that they included so anyway this is separate overall though I think it's a very very solid machine very solid it's like a tank you can move this thing around and you don't have to worry about um, anything getting bent or cracked like some of the i3s you'll see as kits on eBay and everywhere else this thing is solid metal and it's all powder coated so it's nice and smooth now that did cause one problem though these rods that you got to stick in here and also on the on the plates here for the axis they won't go in the holes directly I had to take the rods and on my sander actually sand on the edges and then take a drill and drill out the holes a little bit just to get rid of that material that powder coating that's on there so that was a problem because you know, I don't want to pound it and bend the metal um, that just that's not gonna work and then a few of the things are hokey like the uh, there's only one screw holding the stop switch the the plate stop switch and so if I push this by hand I actually end up pushing the switch out of position so that's something I'm constantly adjusting because there's only one screw the other ones have two screws so that works out good but then the two screws there's nothing there's no like spacer so you end up crunching against the connector and, and man if you're not careful you could break that connector so there's little things like that that yeah they could probably improve um, the adjustments the screws for the stop switches this one I had to put my own in here because the one they gave me was too short and the one down here for the x-axis the adjustment head is on top and that's what actually hits the switch well you get this thing down to where you're close and you might want to just tweak that screw a little bit you can't get to the adjustment head the heads on top instead of on the bottom so and this has got a shoulder so you can't just flip the screw over and use it differently so this should just be a full threaded screw and come up from the bottom so it's little things like that but overall it went together without too many issues um, I kept my patreon people up to date and they heard my whining <laughs> over and over and some of it was my own fault I had some electrical problems I ended up taking everything apart and then putting it back together and I know I had a bad connection because I wasn't getting power to the Arduino but I was getting power into the board but then even after I fixed all that I still was having issues with this thing powering up turns out I had the power supply set to 230 volts that's where it arrived there's a slide switch for 230 versus 110 so I didn't check that it's, it's electronics 101 check your power supply right so I switched that to, to 110 and then everything started working so then I could actually start printing once I had my glass and everything put together so it was about nine hours because it was another hour getting the bed adjusted getting everything set the stop switches before I could get my first print so at that point I said this thing better print as good as a fabricator mini or I'm gonna be pissed <laughs> that's nine hours I'll never get back so let me show you how well it printed so the first thing I printed of course was my ch chest pawn I've tested this on other printers this is my base that I test everything against because it's small it's got a ball and you know really test your your hot end to see if it can do this now I sliced it in simplify 3d the software they recommend is Proner face and they tell you how to set up cura but after nine hours of screwing with this thing I said no I'm not going down another path using their software and everything else I've got simplify 3d I'm just going there and it was they didn't have a setting for maker front but it's a it's a Prusa i3 design so that's what I used I already had a setting in there because I had a Wanho duplicator i3 that it was a clone it just rebranded and I didn't get good results that's the one I sent back got my money back on it because the temperature would just fluctuate so I had the settings I put it in and this thing printed beautifully just beautiful so it's XYZ filament XYZ ABS I went right for ABS I didn't start with PLA I said nope I'm jumping right in so it's XYZ red 
ABS. And I like this filament because it actually, it's kind of like a blend. It's almost like P between PLA and pure ABS. So I can print at a lower temperature. But here's the same pawn, same settings. And I pass this around to various people and almost everyone said the maker front print was better. Just slightly, they're both really good, but bottom line is it printed as good as a Fabricator Mini. So after I did that, I said, okay, let's test a different ABS. So I got out some uh, glow-in-the-dark ABS, something I haven't used in a while, and I printed that rocket. Now this, if you remember, this was um, in a previous film at Friday where someone had posted that their DaVinci Pro printed this really well, but the top was just like melted like crazy. And I said, that's not, that's not really good. And so I, you know, tested my different printers and my DaVinci couldn't handle it. It melted the top, but the Fabricator Mini, I, I couldn't print the whole thing, but I printed the cone, came out really, really good. There's a little bit of melting on top, but it came to a nice point. Well, the maker front, just as good. I got a little bit of ribbing right here, and what it turned out is one of the set screws on the uh, coupling here was actually coming out. It was loose, so it was actually hitting against this rod, and that's when I was getting the vibration. And by the time I caught it, it had already done several layers like that. Now, it stayed in, intact, but it you could see the that spot is bad, but then it recovered and, and went right up to a point. So I'll show close up some close-ups of these at the end of the video but I'll tell you what based on everything I've seen they're right this thing prints as well as a fabricator mini and bigger so I'll be doing more prints on this so just to give you a technical summary of this thing I think in general for $499 electrically and and just the basic operation it's not much different than any other proof shock they're out there. But the metal frame and the way it's so solid, I think helps this thing print good prints. And it's really working well for me. I've printed a bunch of things. In fact, I'm going to use it in some fil future Filament Friday videos. So I'm going to keep this thing around for a while. Uh, a few changes I'm probably going to make. It's got the filament sitting here in the back, and they don't, they give you these brackets, but they don't give you anything to put in the brackets. So I found a dowel rod that fit, but I think I'm going to move this whole thing so it's coming off the front because you got the wires in here going back and forth. You got the filament, and they're kind of fighting each other. Where if I move the filament to hang out here in front, then the filament can come down here and the wiring can stay back. I could put like a spring in the center. So these two will run parallel but never intersect. So this is the way they recommended to do it. I think it should go on the front. The, uh, the electronics in general, you know, I wired it up, I think, pretty decent. Um, but it's just, it's an Arduino Mega with a ramps board. Pretty basic stuff. You know, I actually prefer a dedicated board, a board designed for the 3D printer, which is basically just an Arduino and the ramps board put together with, you know, proper electronics. And that's what the Fabricator Mini has. It's got an MKS base board in it. So the thing I don't like about this type of setup is the connectors on the Arduino. Those Arduino connectors are just designed for prototyping, not for production. Those connectors are not that good. And any kind of high current going through them or sustained current, you know, over time, they wear out. They definitely wear out. So to me, this is a marginal, very marginal approach. It works. But it's just an Arduino shield. It's not, it's not top of the line at all. Now, it did accept the ramps LCD, which is good. Um, another thing is the power supply is just a standard power supply. It was shipped to me with that 230 volt setting instead of the 110. Um, so that's, that's typical. The uh, bearings themselves are just the L, LMU88 bearings or LMUU8, I forget what they're called, but they're just standard bearings and they're tie strapped in place. Now when I got this, there were no tie straps included. I had to find my own. Turned out there was tie straps with the wiring and I used them there, but there were no tie straps for the bearings and it looked like small tie straps. Fortunately, I had some left over from the X-Carve, so I was able to use it on here. But as, as solid as frame is, it's kind of 
strange to see that plastic, plastic tie straps holding the bearings in place. That seems marginal, and it's actually holding the carriage bearings in place. So, I don't know. That, that seems weak to me over time. I don't know if that'll affect it or not. So, in general, I think it's a good solid frame and an average uh, pieces. The MK8 extruder is is very basic although i do think it's easier to load than the one that was on the the wanho duplicator i did not let like loading filament in that thing it was a pain this one is actually pretty easy i'd kind of like to convert this at some point maybe to a bowden tube with an e3 dv6 but it's printing really good so I, I really am not driven to do it right away so in general at 499 dollars for a kit you're definitely paying at the high end for a kit but you are getting a nice metal frame. If they would sell this thing fully assembled for $599, if they could do that, I would say it's a great buy. Go out and get one. $699, okay, you're, you're, it's probably, that's what they're charging, $200 to assemble if you want to go pick it up. Uh, that's pushing it a bit. But then again, the, the Da Vinci Pro is retails for $699, and it doesn't print anywhere near as good as this thing. Plus, this thing is now printed PLA for me, ABS. I want to try flexible. It says it can do that. I believe it can. So overall, I think it's a good printer. I'm going to keep it around. I'm going to use it in my shop. It's definitely giving me prints that are on par to the Fabricator Mini, but allowing me to print bigger. So I can recommend it as long as you're willing to basically dedicate about 10 hours of your time to put it together. So that's it. That's my review. If you guys have any other questions about it or anything specific, leave it in the comments below. And I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.